I'm Clarence Wigfall with AdvancedScienceCommunications.com. Suchi Saria has a PhD from Stanford where she worked on a non-invasive, inexpensive, and fast tool for risk prediction in premature infants that is significantly more accurate than the current standard of care. Suchi is now at Harvard and is scheduled to join Johns Hopkins in a year as an assistant professor in the departments of health policy and computer science. Suchi was one of the presenters at MuckMed 2011, and in a teleconference with Dr. Saria, she outlined her goals as a computational scientist interested in critical health issues. Basically, as more and more data is getting digitized every day, uh, and because of the uh, healthcare reform, there's an emphasis on being able to not just capture, but store and make it easily accessible, a question that comes up is how are we going to actually utilize all this data that's being stored? So, for example, um, just at the Stanford Hospital alone, we had uh, half a terabyte of data from a year's worth of admissions that happened to 500 uh, babies or so at the hospital. And so there's no real way in which uh, in real time during patient care, one can actually look at the data and make sense of all of it and incorporate it into patient care. So now it behooves us to try to figure out other ways to make, um, can we do retrospective analysis to figure out things like um, non-invasive markers for early prediction of disease or identify early when disease exacerbation is taking place so you can intervene early or being able to look at uh, large populations of patients based on this type of data to understand are there subsets of uh, patient populations that behave better. And to do all of these above problems, the primary underlying, I mean, this data is complex, it's high dimensional, it's noisy, it wasn't intended for the purpose of analysis. It was uh, basically observational capture as physicians were performing routine care. So as a computational scientist, my goal is to be able to build methods that can really make use of this type of data to help us answer these questions and uh, make meaningful use of this data. Next, Suchi talked about the type of data that can be collected in a neonatal ICU unit. Uh, then she talked about what can be done with that data. And this gets really involved and is really interesting because now she begins to talk about how the data can be used to begin to predict what is going to happen to this particular child. Let me give you an example of something we did with uh, physicians at the Stanford Hospital. So this was Dr. Anna Penn, Jeffrey Gold, Anand Rajani, and then uh, a computer scientist and uh, my uh, advisor at Stanford, uh, Daphne Kohler. And uh, what we did is we basically looked at data from the neonatal ICU to see how we could use this data to improve patient care within the NICU. Okay, so let me let me show you the type of data that's collected in a neonatal ICU, for example. So it's an infant. We have continuous physiologic streaming data. So this is things like heart rate, respiratory rate, uh, oxygen saturation, ectopic counts, blood pressure. Uh, we have lots of discrete lab data, for example, things like the CBC, the blood cell count, the WBC measurements, RBC measurements. So some of these are made regularly, some of these are made when the doctors order these pre prescriptions based on how the infant is doing. We have recordings of what medications were given, when they were given, what dosage was given. In addition, we also have like what procedures were done and when they were done to the infants. Together, these paint a very detailed picture of an infant where you get this, um, you know, streaming events that are happening in real time that's recorded. And then very, very detailed uh, doctor's notes that tell you exactly what was happening to the baby at any time? Were they showing strange symptoms? How were these symptoms resolved? What was done? And essentially, as a computational scientist, what we're really doing is basically uh, coming up with ways to both, one, denoise this data, two, find structure in this data, three, relate this type of structure to a phenomenon that's happening in the clinic. So, for example, if we took a new set of infants and we looked for structure of this type and then based on that tried to predict whether or not this infant had a specific complication, if we were able to predict this correctly many times um, in many, many infants, then we think that we've landed upon something very interesting. We've identified signatures that are early predictors of specific diseases or, or morbidity. So that's, that's an example of the kinds of 
ways in which this data that's being collected can be actually used for helping at the point of care. We combine this using a very simple mathematical algorithm that could then predict, based on three hours of data, which infant we think downstream is going to have a difficult time in the ICU. Now, why is this useful? This could be really useful. So, for example, if we see that an infant's doing really poorly or is going to be doing really poorly downstream, you could send them to a higher level of care. They may look at it and say, interesting, we need to pay more attention to this uh, infant. Suchi went on to describe an amazing study that she conducted at Stanford that resulted in a tool called PhysiScore. So let's see what she has to say about PhysiScore and uh, its ability to help predict uh, with greater accuracy, uh, non-invasively, how babies will do in a neonatal ICU. So uh, let me show you on this very small study. So I want to put a caveat that this was on a, a small 150 patient population at Stanford. And what we're showing you is basically a comparison of physi score to a few other scores that have been developed over the decades. And what we're showing you here in this table is essentially how our score uh, or something like the physi score that takes routinely captured data compares to some of the other scores that have been um, developed over the years. So for example, although APGAR is computed at five minutes, so very quickly after birth, which is very, very useful, it's not very accurate. We see in terms of prediction of accuracy of uh, complications downstream, APGAR has an accuracy of or area under the curve, as we call it, it's a, a measurement of accuracy, if you will, uh, is about 70%. And uh, compare that with physics score, which is about 91%. So it's much, much more accurate than something like the APGAR. What we see is they all require these uh, invasive measurements that require taking blood from the baby, and they're computed at um, later, like 12 hours as opposed to three hours. So obviously knowing information earlier can help you intervene earlier. So I think it's very exciting for me as a computational scientist to be able to use my skills in being able to uh, affect uh, patient care and better human lives. I think that's very exciting.